Sunshine, I'm in a cutscene that I can't pause. Will, prepare to meet your doom. Ah, you fiends! The pain. What? I, I ain't done anything yet. Then it must have been that really generic bad guy line. Mock me all you want, but I will end you. So what are you, my evil twin? I am much more than that. I am the collected anger you experience when you play a very hard video game. I am the frustration that you have when you experience online lag. I am the feeling you get when you lose your save data after 150 hours of gameplay. I am Elib. Man, that sucks. You're turning it from being dark around you from negative energy. It's another example of my power and the crappy budget that we have on this show. All right, Elib, you know how this doppelganger thing goes. Tell me what you want so I can proceed to kick your ass and put you back into that memory card. What do I want? <laughs> I want to embarrass you. I want to ruin your reputation. I want everybody to finally see the total idiot that you are. Damn, that won't take long. I better end this quick. Too late! Oh, I have already launched a planet-destroying missile from my evil Elium spaceship. Soon, it will crash into this very location and destroy everything! In a way, that's kind of tame for what I do to the world on this show. Silence! Mock me all you want, but you better spend your last moment wisely! Well, of course I'm going to spend my time playing video games, and there's only one game I can think of where I can save the world from a planet-destroying missile. And that's Sparkstar on the Super Nintendo! GAME ON! One day, Bill was sorting through some of his old games and came across his old memory card. But something went wrong. It glitched, and every enemy he had ever defeated in video games was released into the real world. Now he has to replay all his games and defeat the hordes of evil villains, sealing them back into the digital world which they came. Game on! The Super Nintendo, home to some of the best games ever made. Yet, as I look through the people's top tens on YouTube, there is one game I never see. One game that is always left out of the conversation, even though I believe it is one of the very best games the Super Nintendo has to offer. And that game is... Sparkster. The Rocket Knight Sparkster. This guy can throw lasers from his sword like Link, fly through the air, do flaming fireball flips, spin on spot like Sonic. This rocket pack possum is overpowered as hell, and that is exactly why this is so fun to play. Rocket Knight Adventures is often praised for the Mega Drive entries, but those games just don't move as well as Sparkster on the SNES. And it's confusing because the sequel on the Mega Drive is also called Sparkster, Rocket Knight Adventures 2. It has the same box cover, and perhaps many think it's a simple port? But it's not. It's a much different game. And I don't know why publishers do this, but anyway, Sparkstar is a one-man wrecking crew. Blasting through enemies is exhilarating, and learning how to utilise his rocket boost never gets old. With a hold of the button, you power up your rocket pack, and when you let go, you fly in any direction you choose, destroying everyone in your way. This is pretty cool on its own, but linking the flaming spin in with this technique allows you to adjust in mid-air, slamming on the brakes to change direction, or charge up a brand new boost and keep your flight path going. Or sometimes saving you from a nasty end. 
Sparkster has so many ways to maneuver, attack and adjust, he is a dream to a control when you have learned how to master the chaos of bouncing off walls and pinballing around narrow corridors. Every other platform game will often feel slower after you've played Sparkster on the snares. And once more, this diverse range of movements lends itself beautifully to attacks, and with bosses like this in the game, it's a must. Edging out of danger with a simple press of the shoulder buttons, peppering enemy weak spots with sword slashes, doing massive damage with a rocket attack, Sparkster truly is a wonder to move, mixing the best aspects of other action platform games. All the while looking and sounding damn sexy while it does it. Explosions rock the screen, everything moves with a crisp finesse. Level music will have you tapping your toes long after the stage is complete, and Sparkster and his enemies are filled with tons of expression and animated details that you just won't forget. It is because of this game that I look at gaming classics like Final Fantasy VI and say why do you look so damn ugly? I just don't know how so many games on the snares can be held in such high regard for its graphics when sparks that never get mentioned. Each stage's music fits perfectly with the atmosphere, and even when the stage gets a little off topic like the music stage, it is still a joy to see the enemies dress up in new attires and colour leaping off the screen. Oh my god, the enemies are tires, I almost forgot. Enemies dressed in sailor suits, army uniforms, spiked armours, at this point the game is just flexing because it can. Okay, okay, so for some of you, story is important, and SNES games are not always known for their great story, especially the platformers, but Sparkster does alright here. Choosing to tell its story through short cutscenes and small sections that you will pick up if you have a sharp eye enough on the first time through, or more likely on repeated plays as you realise the detail they put in. It's your basic kidnapping the princess affair. A wolf army has stormed a castle, with Sparkster's biggest rival, Axel Gear, Pretty much an evil Sparks of a grudge leading the charge. The princess is taken and Sparks jumps into action to rescue her. And then the gameplay takes over. No words, no pause in the action for story time, just quick cinematic style scenes from time to time and little touches that tell the story as you go. For example, you can tell just how close the events happen from the beginning of the game as you start the stage and see the giant armour which acts as the first boss in the game explode from the castle in the background and leap onto the enemy's gunship. You don't get to see the attack on the castle, but with the size of this boss that's presented to you later, you understand just how much damage the castle was under for the princess to give herself up in the beginning of the game. Or when Sparks actually does make it to the rocket ship, only to find Axel stealing away the princess, the boss explodes from the bottom of the stage, preventing Sparkster from stopping Axel. And if you look in the window, you, you can see Axel flying away while you're left fighting the boss. As the game progresses, it eventually climaxes into you flying into outer space to stop a missile that is being fired at a planet. Nothing is said, but it looks like the princess was wearing some kind of necklace that had an activation code to launch a planet-destroying rocket, and this is what the Wolf Army was after. All of this sprinkled into the gameplay is a perfect way to put gameplay first, but still give just enough drive to give you a reason as to why you're fighting and why you need to play. But the coolest aspects of Sparkstar are still to come, and better yet, they're hidden away. We need to talk. Let's, let's just talk for a minute. You might think this is all fun and games, right? But when that missile comes and destroys everything, including your cat, you're going to be in for trouble, all right? I am trying to save everybody. You can't keep cheering on Elib. What? Okay, you... Who turned off the lights? Hey! No! You, you... Get off! You can't... You can't be messing around with... No! No! Get back to where you were! Ah! 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 Yes, my children, it is I, Elib, and you're all going to be destroyed, but not before I embarrass this idiot Bill first. Yes, yes, he is an idiot, isn't he? He is such an idiot. <laughs> I am evil. I am the evil. I am Elib literally somewhere in my name. It's not really, but you are too stupid to work that out, so that's fine, I can say that. And you, Chaney, you're a waste. 
You can't even beat that miserable Bill at Mario Party! Who do you think you are? Ha! 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 Yes! You know, I don't have... Chaney, there is no sides, there's only Elib. You have to understand this. There is only Elib. There is no sides. I am your leader! Now get in the kitchen and make me some pie! Right now. Right now. Bring it, bring it in. Bring it right now. Right now, please. Thank you very much. No, 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 come back. Come back. She's just brought me a mince pie. Can you see that? Let me explain what she did wrong. Feed me. <laughs> Off you go then. That's better. These questions will understand one day. Why is there no sugar on the top? Oh. So the whole purpose of me being at this partner show is not because you guys asked for me. It's not about you. It's all about Elim. I'm just stalling because my missile, as great as this contraption is, fired from the depths of space. It takes a long time to get to the Earth because I forgot to carry the one. So it kind of goes around a few times and then it smashes. So I need to spare time. I need to need to give it some time. That's all it is. No, there's a Y in there, Cheney. Cheney can't even spell my name right. You can't just make it up. There's no E's in e -lib. Jeez. Let me eat my mixed pie. No. Too polite. Too polite. I'll give you polite. I'm eating live on air. I mean, you can't get much rude than that. I'm also wasting your time. You kind of watch this channel, watch Bill play video games. And here I am eating mince pie in front of you. <laughs> You're watching me eat while a missile is coming to destroy you all. <laughs> well, well, it's been fun for you. For me, you've all been terrible company. This has been a miserable time. And that mince pie was a complete waste. So without further ado, I'm gonna return to my evil space station and watch you all die from the outskirts of space. Cause that's what you deserve. Death! Oi! Keep the noise down out there! Yes, that's right you! Have you got some toilets to clean or something? Clean it! Idiot! Evil! Elim! By the way, I received an email, an email from you people who said this. It was addressed by idiot, idiot, and it said, Bill is an idiot. So I immediately read it. He says, okay Elim, you want to embarrass Bill and you want to destroy his reputation, so you've decided to drop a missile from space to destroy the planet. Won't that mean that everybody's dead so you won't be able to give the benefit of him being embarrassed? Well, I say to you, it's not about you, it's about me. I'll know he'd be embarrassed, I'll know he's dead, and I'll know he's an idiot. So yeah, without further ado, have a rotten day. I hope your Christmas sucks. And I hope you get nothing that you want. Goodbye. Elip, you can't go and just slag off the whole audience. Why not? They're in greats. No, that's not very nice now, is it? They come and watch the TV show. And here you are, just constantly moaning. You got a missile coming from everywhere. And you just think you can come in here and just take over my life. What life? Your life sucks! Everything sucks! Especially your face! Okay, now you're getting personal. And that was my mince pie you ate. <laughs> now it's mine. <laughs> Get going. Leave me alone, alright? Let me play my favourite game in peace. You know you're not going to win because it's my show and I wrote it, so... I'll tell you what, that mince pie was nice. Or it would have been if I would have ate it. Sparkstar is not just an action platformer, it also mixes in these cool shoot-em-up style levels to keep the action going. 
After level 1's beautiful open area of green fields and shimmering rivers and bright blue sky, giving you a chance to get used to all the game's controls in a wide open space, you traverse into the enemy gunship for some close quarter combat. Level 2 tests your skill with the jetpack and what you learn from level 1, as you hang from chains and fly around lava and get punished for silly uncontrolled boosts with crushing devices that will insta-kill you if you don't control yourself. But level 3 is where they get the first on-rail shooter moment, and the game just comes out and says, look what else we have! You control a giant mechanical bird, sprinting across bridges and the wilderness, blasting away enemy advances with lasers, being carried along like a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. This style change challenges your mastery of the controls in a whole new way. It still gives you the access to rocket jump and leap out of the cock to slash at enemies, but it also gives you the additional firepower of the bird's speak laser, while giving you the extra task to moving this hulking bird around and protect yourself from harm. Level 4 is a showcase of level design and situational platforming. You should know by now, with all this power and control at your fingertips, you need to have restraint, or a lot of skill, to truly navigate the narrow paths of this stage. You board an enemy sub, giving chase after the wolf general, taking on everything the game throws at you, while trying not to pinball around in these narrow corridors, or flat out get insta-killed if you're too reckless or too slow, with lasers that blast overhead and water that floods the corridors, proving the wolf army will do anything they can to stop Sparkster. This part is particularly asking you, do you really know how to use the jetpack yet? You better hurry up and learn. Your skills are further tested than the desert level next, with crushing pillars and spikes, ensuring you're not getting away with spamming rocket boost. But here's the thing. If you are skilled enough, you can boost around the stage, reaching areas faster, ignoring tricks and traps, and making a mockery of what the game was throwing at you. With the movement Sparks that has, you can really play this game multiple ways. Next is the music level, and as much as it does feel out of place for me, it's a nice change of scenery from all the rest of the game stages. It is fun to have such a bright and colourful stage at the midpoint of the game. Bouncing off drums, shooting through brass instruments, seeing enemies explode out of tubers with confetti. It's weird, but I like it. Then you have the showdown with your rival, Axel Gear. He uses all the moves you have to deadly precision. This guy will rip you up, flying around the stage as you scream, STAY STILL! And he has a bitchin' flaming kick, which has always made me be like, why don't I have that? This is your test to see if you truly know now, at this point, how to be a rocket knight. So after that, you'd think, that's it, that's it, right? Nothing else can be thrown at me now. I mean, it's already gone above and beyond. Gameplay-wise, level diversity, graphics and sound, Sparkster is the bomb, and I've seen it all. Nope. Just when you thought Sparks ahead hit you with everything it has, it gives you one more trick. A, a vertical shoot em up stage, filled with graphics and a soundtrack that some of the best shmups would be jealous of. Just listen to that music. This isn't a short stage either, this is a full-blown level with detachable spaceships, rocket soldiers flying through space and kung fu robots, climaxing with a final one-on-one -on -one boss battle with Axel in your own mech-on-mech -mech fight. Okay, right, now, um, I never said this game was perfect, and as cool as this part in the game looks, you're truly at the mercy of Axel and how angry he is in the day. I myself often ask when I get to this point in the game, Axel, mate! Are you alright? How you feeling? Are you good today? Yeah, you know, the kid's alright? The wife okay? You had a good day at work? You're not feeling all crazy, are you? You're not going to do anything stupid, right? You're not going to come at me, bruv, are you? You're not going to go crazy, are you? You're not going to, like, you know, come flying at me with all the fists. Oh god, oh god! Axel, in his mech, is ruthless, and sometimes will be relentless in seeking your destruction. Rapid fire combos that will rip you apart, leaving you armless as he pummels you with very little you can do in response. And you can try again and again and wonder what the hell do I do to stop this guy, because if you try to go all out he'll just rip you apart and you don't have enough life. Blocking is dangerous because he might lose one or both of your arms, leaving you pretty much defenseless. And it only takes a few hits for you to be destroyed where it takes him dozens. 
If they just would have taken out the arm damage mechanic in this part, it would have been a real cool test of skill. But no, it's all down to rotten luck. Oh, and you do have this piddly little laser which does pretty much nothing. If anyone knows a surefire way to beat this guy every time, chuck it in the comments below because I'd love to hear it. He is a nightmare. Other times though, he's like... I mean, is he distracted? Does he not see me? Did he get bored? It's like the guy's a split personality. When a round of this boxing boss could be like, Please stop, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, don't hurt me anymore. Then other times it could be like, The AI here is literally a dice roll, and more often than not, defeating Axel will be blasting him while he stands there and just takes it. Not making a move, and you leave the stage saying, Huh? What was that all about? This guy was like, bloody Mike Tyson, then he turned out to be Gabby J. Still, the final level is the space station and is filled with even more neat tricks and graphical marvels as the game continues to deliver right until the end. The missiles that fly by show this really cool 3D type effect. You've got laser shooting crystals, surfing on fire. It really is a treasure trove of cool action scenes. And then you get to the final boss and the coolest feature I have seen in this game and I still think it's pretty cool even now and I don't understand why no one else does it. Sparkster is not a terribly hard game. Once you get used to the controls, you could argue you are overpowered and enemies are ill-equipped to deal with you. Like I mentioned before, Sparkster is like a tank. You have a huge health bar, you have rocket jumps, with perhaps only the really the bosses giving you trouble. And even then, you have so many lives, it's only a matter of time before you work out the patterns and you take them down. This is perhaps true on the normal skill levels, and certainly true on easy. However, there is a secret hidden in Sparkster in its skill system. On easy, you only play a couple of levels, with the harder stages cut out, and the game ending at the first fight with Axel. Normal, you get right up to the fight with the General in his space station, with you saving the princess and him fading away just as he's stole the amulet from around her neck and not quite making it to whatever he was reaching for. You just sort of fly right away and save the princess and everything's cool. But on hard mode, not only does the enemies do more damage, health pickups are fewer, you also get an additional stage with additional cutscenes where the general makes his last desperate reach for the detonator to destroy the planet in his dying moments. This is where the general takes the necklace from the princess and uses it to fire the missile. And you never see this unless you play it on hard. This blew my mind as a kid. A game rewarding you with more content when playing on harder skill levels. And I don't just mean an extra end screen or an extra cinematic or something like that, like most games do. I mean a totally extra boss, extra cutscenes, and a different ending. And this boss has perhaps one of the coolest kick-ass boss themes ever. When you complete the game, Sparkster always tells you to try a harder mode. And like I said, other games do this, but it never seems worth it. And I ignored this for months when I first completed Sparkster. But it's rock solid controls and amazing presentation made me sit down one Saturday and try it on its harder skill level. And I'm so glad I did. It was such a cool reward for playing the game on a harder skill level. And I don't know, Matt, perhaps this is why Sparkster is not often spoken about. Perhaps people just don't know about this extra setting or extra level. I guess skilled gamers playing on normal may find the game too easy and too simple to exploit, not even trying harder skill levels. But if you do, the game delivers with more content and with even harder skill levels after this you can unlock, taking away a lot of your advantages like your extra additional health, less lives and continues, more enemies. Sparkster truly is a game for everyone and it does definitely have the challenge should you just turn it on. If you haven't heard of it and you've played your Marios, your Donkey Kong Countries and your Zeldas and you think you have seen everything the SNES has to offer, then pick up Sparkster and add it to your best of list now. And if you're a skilled player who has played your Mega Mans, your Castlevanias and your Super Metroids, don't dismiss this, ramp up the difficulty, unlock the harder skill levels and see if you can get the challenge you want. 
get those speed run times and really get a blast out of Sparkster. Regardless, whenever I pick up this SNES Classic, I will always have a good time. Its graphics and sound embarrasses a lot of the competition, and it's a blast to play even now. Looking very similar to its brothers on the Mega Drive, but being so much more, Sparkster is a game you can play first time and have a blast, but it rewards you more and more the more you decide to play it. It's a feast in everything it does and truly goes down in history for me as one of the best SNES games no one ever talks about. Okay, now, after playing that, I've been inspired. I've been inspired and uh, I think I know how I'm going to sort out this uh, this missile problem that we've got right here. I mean, what's the worst can happen? I'm, I'm going to gonna um, take out a missile. I mean, it can't be that bad, right? I have to stop the missile. Evil Bill cannot win! My name is not Evil Bill, it's Elib. <sighs> okay, strapped in! Let's do this! Ah! What are you doing?! 